Today I am playing an entire NFL season but with a twist, as the first team to sound the buzzer with some points will win the game. To make it more interesting, I will start with the current laughing stock of the league, that being the Carolina Panthers. Also, for every win, I spin this power wheel, but if I lose, I must spin this power down wheel. Yes, this is technically the second episode, I'll have the first one linked below. And one more rule change, instead of a field goal winning the game, I change the match current regular season overtime rules. Touchdown wins, but field goal requires a defensive stop. I'm sure you know how that works. I did this because like half of my wins last time were from a field goal and I just felt kind of cheap doing that. So yeah, a quality change in general. That being out of the way, let's begin with week number one. The sudden death season will begin in week one against our division foes, the Atlanta Falcons. Now remember, there is no kickoff in Madden. It just kind of goes by what you preference in the settings, but most of the times I'm going to get the ball in this video to start, which is really helpful. And starting for our first offensive play in this video, we had a pancake block by number 64 right there, which helped this 10 yard plus run by Chuba Hubbard. And we'll keep the legs turning by this run by Bryce Young, which is another first down essentially after this slide. And here comes the big play, our first pass. We scramble out and we just have a complete miscue by the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, what is new here? We have a wide open DJ Chark for the touchdown and that is how we end week one with a W. A touchdown walks it off. No need for the Falcons to get the football back. Now, considering we started 1-0, we get to spin the power wheel for each win. We get to spin this wheel, which we'll get for the first time. Looks to be rewind which is going to add a 99 overall legend from said team's past. You know, the Carolina Panthers are like 20 years old, so this really wasn't a hard choice. I decided to pick Luke Kuechly as our 99 legend to bring back, the middle linebacker for the Carolina Panthers. And week two is a very important game as well, another division opponent, and as you can see, our division did pretty good in week one. The Bucks, Saints, and us all got a win, but now against the Saints at home, this time we're kicking the football off. Once again, I have no clue how it works, but I will not complain. For the Saints, we'll start with the football, and here's Luke Kuechly getting right into the action taking down Alvin Kamara for a second down and 10 no gain and once again second and 10 we have a pass by Taysom Hill and this is the only star player on this team we just got outrun by a white tight end quarterback whatever this dude plays I have no clue at this point but now he's at the three yard line thankfully we tackled him before a touchdown happened because we still technically have a chance to stop him at the goal line there's a stop right there for second and goal we get the ball back second and goal right here going for a pass in completion though it's going to set up third down and goal and now the Saints will try to run it on third down and goal but once again we stuff them with Luke Kuechly again it's going to be fourth down and goal and they're going to decide to go for it. who wouldn't here again I take Luke Kuechly user him and he's taken down and we stop him at the one yard line and get the ball back right here so I have good news and bad news bad news we're completely backed up but good news we can win this game with a field goal as we rush up to the 11 with Bryce Young once again third down and four I run a horrible RPO play and now we're actually going to have to punt the football right back to the Saints so the Saints get the ball back they're actually close to midfield I'm using Luke Kuechly again but it doesn't matter because it goes the complete opposite direction to Chris Olave. For whatever reason, he's whitewashed in this game. I mean, look at this dude's skin. And now Derek Carr is just piecing me up as I just could not make the play here. And Chris Olave once again gets the catch at the 15 yard line. But Derek Carr can only be so good at certain times because now he throws a really horrible pass and we get the ball right back in our own territory at the three yard line. So now it's time to make up for our miscues. We're going to go over this completion right here to Adam Thielen, which has a first down to the 26. And eventually get into the 43 yard line for a third down in 10 play where we're going to scramble out. No, we're going to find a pass right here. That's going to be the Chuba Hubbard has a first down in field goal range and I decide just to kick it from here just to win the game. We don't need a touchdown. We've already had multiple possessions. A field goal ends it here and we are 2-0. I have zero clue how he pulled that one off but what's important now is that we're 2-0 and both our wins are against division opponents which is just perfect and next up we're getting literally the best power ups back to back. Now we're going to get maxed out which will have one player join the 99 club by choice. You know I figured getting this one to Bryce Young would be completely unfair so I decided to do Adam Thielen instead and I would not complain. A 99 overall wide receiver on this team definitely helps a lot. So week three, things are starting to get a little bit tougher. We just finished up two division home games, which is really good. We started 2-0, but now we go on the road to the Seattle Seahawks. Another division or NFC game, they're also 2-0. The Seattle Seahawks would start with the football. It's third down and one. I expect a handoff right here, but it's play action pass by Geno, and we just get cooked right here by Noah Fant, who has a big gain on this third down and one. So now to the 39-yard line, go to the opposite side of the field. This is exactly why Drew Locke is now the starter for this team, because that was a horrible pass by Geno Smith and now we have an interception of the 45 yard line already close to field goal range and now we're going to start passing the football just to get in range and you can see it was pretty easy DJ Chark already with his second big play of the game or the video I mean and it's first and 10 for the 13 so we can kick another field goal to win this game and that is exactly what we'll do right here fourth down and 18 it doesn't matter this kick will make us 3-0 you know, and all three wins against NFC teams very very big going down to later the season as well 3-0 you know, start for the Carolina Panthers yeah a 3-0 you know, start to the Panthers season 
season first to score wins was not on my bingo card this time around, but now I'm going to have the Iron Boot one, which is going to add plus five to my kicking stats for Eddie Pinero. So this one's definitely not a huge noticeable upgrade, but you know what? It's going to help make kicks like the one we just made last game, a 79 overall Eddie Pinero's now on the Carolina Panthers. Kick forwards against another NFC team. That's the Minnesota Vikings. They're not off to a hot start, but as you can see, we are. We are 3-0, and and our division is definitely lacking right now. So starting with the football, we have a third down and 11 situation, which I barely get out of this, but I find Adam Thielen, who's now a 99 overall, and it proves right here as he breaks a tackle and he takes a crotch shot, which means he is not having kids for the rest of his life now. But first down and 10 for the 25, a good handoff to Chuba Hubbard has got us inside the 10-yard line. We can win this with a touchdown. And it looks like we're going to do just that on this throw right here. Second and 10 to Hayden Hurst, a beautiful fade to the right corner of the end zone, has a touchdown, and that's how we start the season 4-0 as the Carolina Panthers. What a throw and a catch by Hayden Hurst. The Carolina Panthers are 4-0. When was the last time you heard this 2015 but here's our next spin on the wheel which we're gonna get no fly zone which will give plus five defensive stats to all our starting defensive backs and this power up we just received was really really helpful i mean look at our defensive rating now in 87 you can you can see players such as jc horn and all the players shown here are boosted up really good we almost have 90 overalls in our defensive back situations but still looking really good in defense the carolina panthers week five i figured would be a tough game it's against the detroit lions even though they're one in three they are still a pretty solid team on paper, but we are 4-0. Maybe we can make it 5-0 with this next game right here. So the Lions start with the football. It's third down and eight, and I'm just hoping they cannot get a completion right here, but there's just a wide open Amon Ross St. Brown streaking in the middle of the field. But we do get him to another third down 11. This one's close to midfield. I bring the pressure to Jared Goff, and he can't do anything about it. Brian Burns and Luke Keekley just came flying off the edge to make a fourth and 20. So of course, they put the football, and all I need is a field goal. I hand off a halfback draw to Chuba Hubbard. He gets us to the 47, but it is fourth down after I just could not run from any more than that. So I did give the ball right back to the Lions and somehow Sam Laporta made this catch. I thought for sure I was going to intercept that one. And second and two from the 44, Jameer Gibbs is starting to piece this up now as he's gotten to field goal range and it looks like we might take our first L of the season. And as the Lions line up for a kick, I completely missed this block right here somehow. It looks like I was on 100,000 ping right here, but the Lions will win this first game. We'll drop one and we'll spend our first time on the power down wheel. You know, to be fair, 5-0 is a very bad expectation to have. I'll accept 4-1. I'll take the L. But to be honest, this L wheel is pretty punishing. There's a lot of bad consequences on this wheel. We'll start with the first one, which is going to be cramps. I don't know why the wheel is so slow, but I believe this one's going to subtract five rushing stats from my starting running backs. And yeah, that downgrade definitely hurts. As you can see, Miles Sanders is now our number one running back. It used to be Chuba Hubbard, but both of them are at 73 and 72 overall, respectively. Definitely hurts the offense a little bit, but you know what? We're still in it. We're still like four and one. Nothing's too panicking yet. And now week six, we have another challenge. It's against the Miami Dolphins, who are also four and one, and they're 87 overall across the board. And the Saints are catching up in the division, but it's a rainy day in Miami. We have a solid completion to Hayden Hurst. He's got us cross midfield as we start with the football. And from the 37, I fake the handoff. Go play action and great pass right here to DJ Chark. Again, another huge play by him and he completely kills himself getting into the end zone right here where you know what? We'll take it because it's going to grant us a win. Another first score touchdown will make us 5-1 and one with a win over the Miami Dolphins. A very surprising win to say and now we are 5-1 and one. back to this wheel again. A really good start and we're going to get 50 upgrade points, which are going to be spent to our liking on any player we want to. It could be multiple players, it could be one. And for these 50 upgrade points, I decided to spend all of them on Bryce Young, our quarterback, just kind of distributing them everywhere, five points to every passing category, and you can see it's bottomed up to an 83 overall. And as well, his hidden potential is about to show as he has 467 of 500 downs played with him. Week 8, we go back home to Carolina to play the Houston Texans, who are not starting too good, but we are 5-1, and one, and our division is definitely lacking a little bit, as the Falcons are in second they have four losses first and 10 from the 18 we started the football miles sanders has it and now it's looking like that power down we got for our running backs is starting to hurt us because he fumbles the football away and gives up basically an easy win for the texans however it goes to booth review and it looks like the fumble was caused because he fell to the ground impact caused the fumble which means we retain possession after an overturned call by the referees thanks zebras for that one but we did end up punting the football anyway so it really didn't matter and we gave it right back to the houston texans around midfield where cj stroud one of the best rookie 
quarterbacks this year would take over, and he was just not ready for Luke Keekley coming in hot for a third and 15 now after that sack. And I'm sensing a little deja vu. It's another sack by Luke Keekley, but this time it's on the ground. It's a strip sack picked up by our defense, and this is going to be an entertaining way to begin 6-1 and one to the Carolina Panthers season. And how about we end it with a little festive jig for the holiday season. But even though we've made it to the cold holiday season, the bets are only starting to get hotter. In collaboration with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the NFL, they have an offer that you do not want to miss. You can place just a $5 wager and receive $150 worth of bonus bets in your account instantly. To make this happen, you just need to use my promo code DEANSWORLD, that's DEANSWORLD all caps, and by doing so, you can treat yourself to an extra $150 worth of bonus bets for the holidays. If you're already signed up for DraftKings, don't sweat it, because you can place a no sweat bet, which would give you a bonus bet back from your same game parlay or your same game parlay X if your bet does not hit, in which max reward limits apply. Now what are same game parlays you might ask? They are a way to combine bets from multiple games, players, or stat lines, in which a success Successful bet can give you a shot at an even higher payout. And if sports betting is not allowed in your state, don't worry because the DraftKings Daily Fantasy app gives you a chance of cashing prizes in as well. So head over to the App Store and download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Make sure to use my promo code DEANSWORLD for an extra $150 worth of bonus bets off a $5 wager. And big thanks to DraftKings for being today's video sponsor. Let's continue forward. I would not complain about the Carolina Panthers being 6-1, but that sounds hella unrealistic. But anyways, we'll continue with the juiced power up which is going to add five overall to our top three players i mean we're just getting even better at this point the juice power up is really helpful it's going to add plus five overall to players such as duan brown jc horn and it's going to boost our defense up to an 88 overall as our offense will stay at 80 and give us an 83 overall ranking week nine we're looking to keep things rolling with another home game this time it's against the indianapolis colts they are two and six but i do think they are kind of a sleeper we'd also have a really comfortable lead in the division and the reason why i think they're a sleeper is because this man right here Jonathan Taylor still exists, believe it or not, and he has a huge run, and he completely breaks my ankles not once, but twice, as he has a run to the 48-yard line after 27 yards, and we just sit on top of him. You know what? They're going to do the exact same thing again, because they saw that I just couldn't stop it, and I get my ankles broken again for the fourth time, or the third time, couldn't break that tackle, and I just really don't know how this dude would just not go out of bounds. It took him to the 20-yard line to finally go out. And Gardner Minshew looking to get a touchdown pass. He can't get it. He fumbles the football, but thankfully, he has IQ to drop down on it and pick it back up at second and 26. Where they would end up kicking a field goal to take a 3-0 lead, which means we do have to respond with a field goal or a touchdown of our own. So getting the football back, it's 4th down and 7. This is the final try. I find an open tight end, but a great defensive play backtracking right there. It's going to cause a turnover on downs, which means we're going to lose this football game. A surprising loss, but you know what? It's going to happen eventually. We're going to lose to the 2-6 and six Indianapolis Colts. Well, definitely no panic. Yes, losing sucks, but at the end of the day, we are 6-2. and two. But here's a spin on the power down wheel, which we are going to stub our toe and honestly, this is actually not really a bad one because that's just going to take away that kicking upgrade we had. The kicker upgrades that I did earlier are basically nullified as he goes right back down to a 76 overall, but I'm not panicking too much. It's not a huge difference for a kicker. Now going into week 10, we are playing the Chicago Bears, which to my surprise are actually an NFC threat sitting at 6-3. and three. Starting with the football once again, it's 0-0 of course, and I'm going to find this halfback angle pass to Miles Sanders, which got us to the 46-yard line. But I do eventually get a third down and nine, which I was able to scramble out and find this pass right here, but it it was broken up just a little too close to the defense. If I could have led that one a little bit more, I would have had that catch. I decided to kick this 54-yard kick, and maybe it's a little ironic that we just lost some kicking attributes in our last loss because Eddie Pinero misses this one by a couple yards. If he didn't have that upgrade or downgrade, I mean, we would have probably made this kick. And because of that, the Chicago Bears take over, and DJ Moore gets his revenge, sweet, sweet revenge against his former team. Gets some first down and 10 around field goal range, and that's all they need to win this game, too. Because second and seven they actually want more and this is the first time we get scored on with a touchdown by Cole Komet and somehow it's to the Chicago Bears so yes we just lost two games in a row to the Colts and Bears very embarrassing but yeah we're gonna drop two games in a row okay so we just lost two games in a row and that was to the Colts and Bears is it time to panic maybe just a little but I'm still chilling at the moment but our next downgrade will be pancaked which is going to take negative five defensive stats away for our defensive line and that power down definitely hurts our defensive line a little bit as you can see but our defense doesn't completely 
completely break. They just bend a little bit. We lose one ranking and we're now back to an 87 overall on defense. Week 11, we're in jeopardy of losing three games in a row because we're playing the undefeated 9-0 Dallas Cowboys, who are the number one seed in the NFC. And this is a pretty important game to stay alive in our playoff picture for the NFC. Once again, we started the football like a lot in this video and Bryce Young scrambles out. And this time we were able to connect on the run with a beautiful pass to Jonathan Mingo. And that's got us to the 10 yard line against the Dallas Cowboys. 91 overall team, by the way. First down 10 from the 10. I handed off the Miles Sanders. Great block by Adam Thielen. And we end up winning this game. A huge upset, which is going to give us another win. Another needed win after losing two in a row. And the Cowboys will drop 9-1. and one. Nah, I just lied. There's nothing to worry about. We just took down the 9-0 and oh Cowboys. And we're back on spinning the good power wheel, which will get brick wall, which is going to add plus five blocking stats for our entire offensive line. That's a pretty big one. Definitely love to see this upgrade. Our offensive line has been pretty solid this video, but it's going to be a whole lot better. We get our offense to an 81, and our overall is at an 83. Week 12, we travel to take on the Tennessee Titans. They're 6-4. and four, We're 7-3. and three. We have a two-game lead the division right now, and we have a road game to play. This is going to be a tough one. Third down and eight, trying to find a pass for Bryce Young here, and I find a short opening, but I just overthrow it by half a step to Jonathan Mingo, which means we do have to punt the football, unfortunately. So we get it back to the Tennessee Titans. It's a handoff to Derrick Henry. He breaks through the offensive line, and I completely miss all these tackles, and then I get completely clipped on right here, like that one play a couple years ago, and Derrick Henry takes this one to the house after a completely embarrassing play on defense by my end, and we deserve to lose that game. Derrick Henry just singly pieced us there. Yeah, that stiff arm looked like that viral play that Derrick Henry pulled off a couple years ago, but now back to the power down wheel because we lost, and we're gonna get blindfolded, which is gonna take away five passing stats to Bryce Young. That hurts. Definitely a hurtful downgrade. We don't want Bryce Young or quarterback to lose points, but he does here. He was an 84 overall, but now he's a 76. Well, it's time to get back on track against a division opponent. Even though they're four and seven, every division game is really important, and I would like to win this one on the road. You know my philosophy. I only show kickoffs if something important happens. So something important has to happen here, right? Well, I feel this one from the three yard line, and I find an opening right here from the 30 to the 40, and it looks like I have the touchdown in sight, but not before I'm DK Metcalf to buy number 29 here, but still a solid return to the 13-yard line. And of course, this would end in a touchdown with a handoff, the Chuba Hubbard, which is going to give us an 8-4 and record and another win over our division opponents to make it 3-0 and on the season right now against them. Well, now we're 8-4 and and we're back on track. Back to the power up wheel, which we will land on Stampede, which I believe is a defensive upgrade as it is. We're going to add 5 defensive stats back to our defensive line. And with that defensive upgrade to our defensive front, our defense goes back to an 88 overall and we jump up to an 84 overall as well. Now it's time for week number 14. We have to take on the New Orleans Saints again, who are 5-7. and seven. And at third down and 9, I think I stay in the pocket just a little too long because I'm going to take a strip sack, not before Cameron Jordan picks up the football and returns this one for a touchdown. A devastating loss, but at least we got out of there quick, and the Saints will take a really much needed win against a division opponent us here. Well, it's definitely a little concerning that we just lost to a division opponent, but as long as we take care of the Falcons this week, we should be fine. But what's our punishment? And, okay, that's actually not not good at all. So here's what's going to happen. The other three teams in my division will get a force win their next week. Now, since we play the Atlanta Falcons next week, that means the Falcons just get a free win over us. That's definitely not good at all. So essentially, as you can see, we just had to simulate one week and we basically lost it to the Atlanta Falcons. So now look at this. We thought we were sitting pretty and pretty comfortable in our division, but now the Falcons and Saints, both at seven and seven, they're only one game out. We're eight and six. We have to start winning some games now. So week 16, another NFC opponent. It's going to be the Green Bay Packers at home. And third down and 10 for Bryce Young. I'm looking for a pass and I completed the Jonathan Mingo. A huge catch to make us stay alive in this football game. And I decided to roll out and look at this sideline pass right here. Perfect accuracy. Perfect placement. That's going to be a completion of the Terrence Marshall to the 34. It's already looking like I can get a field goal but you know I want more and I'm going for the tight end and I have no clue how he had this catch right here. Ian Thomas, I believe that's who it was. What a catch. And you can see on the replay, he wasn't even looking at it. He just turned around and put a hand up and just caught it with one hand. And that's how we win this game. It's Bryce Young dancing like a toddler. So that brings our record to 9-6. and six. Just a few more wins and we should clinch the NFC South. But with this win, we will get, I believe, we'll get Bullseye, which is really good. That's going to add five passing stats to Bryce Young. And Bryce Young is going to get his stats back. He's now up to an 86 overall and he has his superstar potential. Things are looking bright now in Carolina. We've 
made it to week 17. It's going to be against the Jacksonville Jaguars. If we can win this game, we'll probably take care of the division, but the Falcons are riding our trail with 8-7 and seven record. So another third down situation. This time I go for a really risky pass, and I really didn't need that completion. That was into double coverage. So I punt the football, give it back to Trevor Lawrence, and look at this play right here. I try to go for the interception. I miss, and I don't know who 21 is, but he must have bet the first time touchdown to be Zay Jones this time around because that was a horrible attempt of a tackle, and we just basically gave this game to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that was definitely a scenario where I did not want to lose a football game because now look at this. We have lost the division lead going into week 18, which means if we lose, we don't even make the playoffs. The Atlanta Falcons are over us at 9-7. and seven. All right, so I hope this is the very last power down we'll get this video. There's only one I do not want to get because it would basically end the video. It's Force L. If it lands on that, this video is over, but it's going to land on... Oh, that sucks, man. Poison. That's going to lose five overall to our top three players. And now things are starting to get a little bit concerning. Because of that, we just lost five overall to some of our best players, including Adam Thielen and Luke Keekley. They're still looking pretty solid, but things are looking pretty bad for us. We must win this next game and hope the Falcons lose as well to make the playoffs as the four seed. And here it is, week 18 against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Must win and the Falcons must lose. We're 9-7, and seven, so are the Falcons. First and 10 from the 25, looking for Adam Thielen on this couch. A really good block as well by DJ Chark. And we break a couple of tackles. We get to the 49-yard line. A really good start to a must-win game here. Bryce Young going to go for a crossing route on this X. And this really should be intercepted and turned back for a pick six. We are very lucky to be staying alive in the playoff hunt right now. We end up getting the second down and goal. We hand it off to Chuba Hubbard and we win this football game and that's going to finish off our regular season 10 and 7 as Chuba Hubbard hits the Dougie. Now we only have to hope the Atlanta Falcons lost to the New Orleans Saints. They punch our tickets into the playoffs. In which that is exactly what happened. The Saints came up clutch for us. They beat the Falcons and we take control of the NFC South with a 10 and 7 record and we'll move on to the wild card round to play the Philadelphia Eagles. And because that was our last win in the regular season, this is the last wheel spin. We do not spin the wheel at all in the playoffs, and thankfully it's going to be a power-up spin, which it will land on Bandit. Oh, that's actually really good because we get to steal the best player from the team we just beat, which was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And so our final power-up was a really good one. We were able to steal Mike Evans from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, add to our offense to make an 84 overall, and we finally have an X-factor in offense to pass the football to. Things are looking good going into the wild card, but this is going to be a tough game against the defending NFC champions. So this is how the playoffs are going to work. We're going to take all our AFC matchups, all our NFC matchups, and we'll be doing the same thing. It'll be first to score style wins. Of course, field goal doesn't win it, touchdown does. We'll take all those games, simulate them, and then we'll get to our game against the Eagles. So let's start with the Bills and Jaguars. All right, starting with the two versus seven, the Bills and Jaguars. First to score, a touchdown essentially wins this game. No one scored yet. Whatever score wins, wins the game. It's the Bills. They just won seven to nothing. All right, next up is the three seed Ravens versus the six seed Raiders who's going to score first in this game and they have a field goal so the Ravens or Raiders have a chance but they didn't get it it was too late they already had a possession so that means the Ravens will win this game and final AFC wildcard game it's the Steelers it's the Titans Titans are the four seed looks like the Steelers are starting with the football and they will get a field goal so the Titans get a chance and they score a touchdown on that drive which means the Titans will win heading over to the NFC for the number two Bears the number seven Seahawks this one could be an upset it looks like the Seahawks got the ball back and they scored a touchdown the Seahawks is number seven seed will win this game. And our final wild card game before we get to ours, it's the Packers and Niners. The outcome of this game always haunts the Packers, but let's just see if they can change that. And the Packers get the ball back and score a touchdown. They actually just beat the Niners in the playoffs. Wow. And now for whatever reason, the wild card round, the Philadelphia Eagles start with the football. And yes, that's Jarvis Landry, who just pieced us up in the secondary in a great catch to put the Eagles at the 48-yard line. I'm a little scared to play the Philadelphia Eagles if you can already tell already. And here is Jalen Hurts going to scrub out what should have been a sack, ends up turning into a 25 yard run by Jalen Hurts and he gets popped and holds onto the football still to the 28. Once again, are you surprised? Jalen Hurts and the RPO going to run this one and I end up missing this tackle but I pop him again and he still holds onto the football. My only hope is that he fumbles it but he doesn't. It's now to the 17. And third down to nine, I just have to hope for a prayer here and that's what's answered because Jalen Hurts overthrows Devontae Smith. That would have won the game with a touchdown but instead they have to kick a field goal, get three points and I have a chance to maybe get a touchdown win this game or get a field goal and tie it back up. But as you can see, the Philadelphia Eagles defense was no joke. I just took a sack to a third down and 26 by Hassan Reddick, and I'm at my own nine-yard line. Not looking too good. So third 
and 26. I run play action, hoping to find a completion, and I am instantly sacked again for a fourth and 32. And this is basically game. I have to go for this to stay alive in the playoffs. Fourth and 32. I am hoping on this one route, but this white safety comes up and makes the biggest play of his life. A white safety. You heard that right. And that is where our run ends and the sudden death first to score season ends. Definitely sucks to say, but we were the Carolina Panthers after all. Well, yeah, that was the ending we did not hope for, but to be honest, we did play the Philadelphia Eagles in the wild card round. They are the defending NFC champions. That was just fighting an uphill battle right there, but we're still going to continue on with the video because why not? We still have all these divisional matchups. It's the first to score. Same thing goes around, starting with the Chiefs and Titans. All right, here's the number one seed versus the number four seed, the Kansas City Chiefs. They start with the football, and easy enough, they score a touchdown. Game over. Next up is the two Bills versus the number three Ravens. The winner of this will play the Kansas City Chiefs at at home and looks like no one scored yet first score wins from here on out and it's going to be the Buffalo Bills so we have Chiefs versus Bills and the AFC Championship game and over to the NFC we have the number one Cowboys versus the number seven Seahawks this would be embarrassing if the Cowboys lose this divisional matchup where it looks like they will not because they get the ball and they score a touchdown and the final divisional matchup is the Green Bay Packers and the team that beat us that's the Philadelphia Eagles I'm rooting for the Packers here obviously as a Packers fan they do not score first but they do get the football back and however the Eagles will score a touchdown the Eagles will move on and so here of the conference champion games. It's going to be the Chiefs versus the Bills and the Cowboys versus the Eagles, starting with the AFC. Here's the AFC Championship game between the Bills and Chiefs. Already multiple possessions and no one still scored yet. No one still scored. Come on, Bills. Come on, Chiefs. Something happened. There's a touchdown. The Chiefs finally got it before halftime. They're moving to the Super Bowl. And then here's the NFC Championship game. If this happened in real life, we'd probably have a Civil War start somewhere in Philadelphia or Dallas. Who is going to score first? It's going to be the Dallas Cowboys. Easy enough. Wow, I've never seen a Super Bowl that America would hate more. It's the Chiefs and the Cowboys, who will win first to score style? Well, it looks like the Kansas City Chiefs will start with the football here in the Super Bowl. This is their golden opportunity to end it here with a touchdown. First offensive play is a handoff to Kadarius Tony. He's going up north for 10 plus yards to the 37. Quick to the line after that gain of 12 yards. Mahomes is going to pass this one. Stays to Travis Kelsey. He's going to pick up 8 yards. Now second down and 2 will stay quick to Travis Kelsey again. That's going to give us cross midfield to the 49. They aren't in field goal range as well, so they definitely want to get this first down because then they'll have to punt the football. Mahomes is going to pass he has open Pacheco, and that's a first down to the 36. Again, they keep on handing the football off, but we'll have another third down. This time, it's three yards. But now we've reached the third down and three. This is an opportunity for the Cowboys to get a defensive stop, which they will after an overthrow by Mahomes. That looked like an easy completion with a wide-open receiver. They have to kick a field goal. You definitely can't complain about putting points on the board, but you would rather have that Travis Kelsey catch right there. It's going to be 3 nothing. Cowboys can win with a touchdown. Second and four, another short pass. This is a completion to CD Lamb for the first down to the 39. Second and 10, 50 seconds left in the first quarter. We almost have an interception. Thankfully, it was just underthrown enough for Michael Gallup to come down the catch of the 43. If Trent McDuffie was able to turn around just a little bit quicker than he was, he easily would have picked that ball off, but still, nonetheless, a good catch by Michael Gallup. And Flip Fields will have second and three. A first handoff today for Tony Pollard as he picks up the first down. The Cowboys are well into field goal range now, but they need a win with a touchdown. The Cowboys have been marching down the field while also playing with their food. The Chiefs are just getting chewed up right now on defense. Dak Prescott scrambles out. There's a flag. This is probably going to be offensive holding. That's a tough break for the Cowboys offense because they're now 20 yards out and Dak Prescott almost throws the interception which would end the game to Nick Bolton. If the Chiefs do stop to a field goal, remember any points to win the game from here on out, but that does not mean the Cowboys can still not score a touchdown here as CeeDee Lamb with a great catch to make it third and manageable with three yards to go. 14 yards out, they're going to pass. Dak Prescott has the protection he needs and he finds a touchdown to CeeDee Lamb to win the Super Bowl. Definitely was a fun doing this again. I wish I had a better outcome, but yeah, I was the Carolina Panthers for the Dallas Cowboys won the Super Bowl. This is something you only see in Madden 24. So thank you everyone for watching this video. Thanks for the suggestions to add the power down wheel. I really enjoy this series so if you want to see it again just let me know and more videos coming soon. Thank you guys for watching.